Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. In this one, we're gonna be building off of a video that we posted previously, working with Michelle and her horse, who tends to lose her mind at a show. She says she's great at home, she freaks out at the show. We do an interview and kind of talk about the challenges she has, which includes getting bucked off, rearing, that sort of thing. And so this is the part two of that video. If you wanna see part one, go back and watch the first one. And I uh, hope you guys enjoy this video. Honestly, out of everything I've said and done this whole thing, probably what we're going to do riding and the whinnying and getting after her when she whinnies is probably going to be the most meaningful things that you guys can change. Because when she whinnies, why is she whinnying? We know she's bothered. We know it's a right-brained thought. Well, I, I know that to be true. Um, but what is she, who is she talking to? Anybody. The other, ho the other horses. She's not talking to us. And that's what you said when you came in here is you said the number one problem is when she's not with her buddy, she's stressed out and she's worried about all her buddies. You're her buddy. The leader is here. And not only you're the best buddy because you're the leader. So we're going to use the buddy system hundred percent, but it's the rider to her, the, the handler on the ground to her, not them. I'm right here. Like, Hey, this, this is a, I just want to let you guys know that we do monthly giveaways on my Patreon page. If you're looking for a horsemanship guide, horsemanship is a journey, not a destination. I would like to be your horsemanship guide. All you need to do to have that is to follow my Patreon page. It's $10 a month. You can ask questions. You can get video coaching. We do uh, weekly videos. It's a really great value. So I hope to see you guys on there. I'll leave a link in the description below. Let's get back to the video. The deal here, you know, it's like, it's like if you go and you have coffee with a, a friend and they're sitting there watching TV or looking on their phone and they're not talking. It's like, <clears throat> hey, talk, you know, talk to me. I'm right here, right? Well, that's what she's doing. When she whinnies, she's, she's going on TikTok, goofing around. She's not, she's not paying attention to you. So you got to call her out on that, okay? I say TikTok, that's funny to say. The reality is she's actually thinking about survival at that moment. When she whinnies out, she's going to an instinctual response to where's the herd, where do I need to leave to get to the herd? So that's why we're not waiting for her to leave. We're not waiting for her to rear. We're calling her out at the moment of the, the, the sin of worrying about the other horses, that going right brain there. It's actually kind of nice because it's a very obvious thing. Yeah, she's, she's very honest. She's, she's yeah, honest. yeah. If you, some of the problem horse videos that I did recently the challenge with those horses is they were more sneaky about it. They were not, they weren't being sneaky. It's just, they were more introverted. So it's kind of like the human version of somebody who's mad at you and they won't say it, but they let it build and build and build until that's, that's it. Instead of just being, Hey, I didn't like it when you said this the other day, or when you, when you stood me up for coffee or whatever, you know, she will tell you. She will tell you. Yeah. So this is good. This is good news because now you guys can fix it. And what I would recommend doing is adding pressure, doing a quick hind quarter yield, until she decompresses and then stop. And then ideally settle and finish it with her head down. That would be the perfect recipe. So you're riding, you're gonna bend her around like this. This would be the riding version. You'd be sitting on her, you would use your inside leg, you would push her around, and you would wait for the feet to get a little sticky. See right now they're moving way too easily. She's a, she's a ball right now. I want her to turn into a chair. Okay, chairs are hard to push across the room, balls are easy to push. I want her to get a little more sticky. When her feet get sticky, that tells me her mental state has changed. Do you see it? Do you see it? Right? See how they're getting a little more? Uh, uh, uh. Now the head goes down. And in riding world, you're gonna do that by lifting up on your reins. So it's hindquarters, lift up, head down. Again, people, I show this and people think I sit there on my horse all day long spinning them around. I don't. <laughs> I just teach them this a few times and then I do it when I need to. That's it. You know. So I have some horses that have maybe done this twice in their life. I have other horses that they do it twice in a ride. You know, it's a, it just depends on what, what you have going on there. Uh, but that's the move. Okay. Um, hind quarter yield, hands up in the air. Wait for her to just put a little more pressure in your hands to think down and then release. And I would really... I would only teach her the head down at the standstill because you don't want her to pull in your hands other parts of the ride. So I would isolate it to we're going to lift. And when you do it with your reins, she's going to feel the reins 
picking up across her neck. So that's kind of the pre-signal before contact. So the theory would be you'd get this good enough that you just lift your reins a little bit and her head just goes down. So you're not actually teaching her to push in the bit because if you did this excessively too much, um, you could teach her to pull in your, in your hands too much. Um, let's see, what else was I gonna do? One other little exercise that I would have you do with her is one I call owning space. And this one, I'm not, she's, to me, she's not overly pushy. I think she could be if she's worried, but it's not her go-to to just push the human around. But I still want to be dominant towards her. And the way I'm going to be dominant towards her is I'm going to walk on a line and I'm going to move her feet off this line. That makes me alpha horse out here because she yielded to my space. And in horse world, that's the difference, you know. Now, she doesn't know the human can do that, but that's, that's the way it works, right? And she understands these games very well because she's the alpha mare. So she's very clear on how, the, how these games work. She plays them with other horses. So I present my energy up. She's not moving. And I'm ready to own my space. Notice there was zero part of me that was like, oh, let me go around you. Right. you know. And to me, you, you strike me as a confident person. Both of you do. And this won't be a, an issue for you guys. Some people are really like, excuse me, excuse me. I'm trying to get through, you know. And, and everybody else just keeps filling in around them until they're like, oh, I can't. <laughs> and then they give up and walk away. This horse would eat that person's lunch, right? And so, so you, can't, you can't be a mouse around her. You know, you got to bring your life up and go, I'm coming through. And see there, I didn't need the stick. Does that make sense? Yeah. But you need to have that from her as well. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's head up, shoulders back. Walk with presence and energy. That, it's, it's that easy. But if you're not there mentally, you can't offer that to your horse. So on a horsemanship journey, people need to learn to do this. Now, I'm pointing this out because some of you at home are going to have trouble with this. When I ask you to do this, you're going to go. And you're going to want to go around. That's going to be your default, and you can't do that. It won't work. Not with a, a more dominant horse. Head up, shoulders back, march. And the other thing, here's another point that's really important about this. I didn't go fast. I didn't go running up to her. A lot of people that have trouble bringing up their, their life, they add speed to, to make up for confidence. <laughs> and so they go real fast. It's like, don't do that. Go slow and just say, this is my space. I would move off this space if I were you. You know, and again, I don't want to have to move anything. I don't want to have to touch her. The lower the... the when a person, when the trainer does less first, they create a more responsible partner. That's a good quote. You guys should post that on social media. Okay. It is true. When you, when you do that less first, it's like if the kid can take out the garbage without being told to do it, that's better than you had to tell him to do it. But having to tell him to do it is still, having to tell him to do it is still better than them saying, no, <laughs> I'm not doing it, right? So there's levels of, res of response, um, but we want to give them that responsibility. Now, I like to play with a horse with them backing up off my back because a lot of times we're leading a horse and they're slightly behind us. And if we don't ever teach them to respect our back, if something scares them, they'll just plow right over. And so it's, a, it's kind of a simple thing to just play with, just walk around. And then just kind of flap your arms a little bit and, and kind of bring your life up and ask them to go backwards. If she starts veering off one way or the other, bring your stick up and do that. All right, you feel ready to take her for a spin? Yeah, <laughs> please. The cows came into the pen here, so we're gonna get those out. Is she, she's not seen cows? Not that I know of. Yeah, so I don't wanna, maybe on all the we don't need a trainer to be a cow horse and a jumping horse in the same day. <laughs> you want the halter under the water? Uh, no, we can take it off, I, however you normally do it. Are you familiar with these rope halters? Yes. You have one? I, I don't. You don't, okay. I do not. <laughs> if you feel like you can get that done, Okay. If you feel like you can get it done without the rope halter, that's fine. You know, there's no magical sauce to the rope halter. Um, 
And she is a, wants to be a soft horse. She doesn't want to pull or push into pressure. No. So I'm going to teach her this then on the right. So that would theoretically be the harder way. And then I'll have you teach it on the left side when you're riding her. And so again, all I'm going to do is if you're riding, you would draw this rein back here, okay? And you would pull and release on it as firm or as soft as how intense she was being, right? So in other words, if a horse whinnies a little bit, I'm going to be pretty soft. If they spook and they jump 20 feet over there, I'm going to do it a lot of bit. <laughs> you know, if they buck, I'm going to... Exactly, exactly. So you're doing this, and then you're also pushing her with this leg. And you're wanting her to slow down and think about wearing it, okay? You, like, I don't want her to move. I want you to bump her with it, but I don't want her to move very quickly. I want her to get in the mental state that says, I want to stop now, like right there. She's slowing down. My pressure is still on her, and she's thinking about slowing down. Now I'm going to lift up on this rein and the other one. And I'm just waiting for her to just think about putting her head down a little bit. So the idea is that while her head is up, there was some pressure on. Is this making sense to you guys? Yeah, we've, we've done, we do it. We don't necessarily say up or more. It's a um, connection for dressage. Yeah. Um, so that's what we do. Yeah. I, I, okay. So like long and low, getting them to stretch down. Yeah. Okay. So I want this to be a different thing. <laughs> I want this to be a recovery strategy. <laughs> this is the horse is not paying attention like she just did. So see how fast her feet are moving? I don't want them to move that fast. So I'm gonna stick with this until the feet get slower. There, she wanted to stop right there so I let her, hands up. And is this, this is, you're saying this is pretty typical of her to winning and all that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So this is the mild version. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. I think there's a little connection there. So we have a mounting block over here. If you normally use a mounting block. Okay. <laughs> These guys are game. You guys don't mess okay. around. We don't mess around. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. We have a lot of horses to ride every day. <laughs> gotcha. Okay, so we're just gonna, we're gonna start training that exercise right away. Okay. So not two hands with contact, one rein, and just kind of bend around. And let's go to the right side first, okay. just because I started practicing that. Just and pretty slow with your hands too. Okay, think about teaching it. Just kind of pull and release, and just feel for when the feet start going slower and sticky. Pull and release. I want a lot of bend in her head and neck. Yep, good. We're just waiting now for really slow feet. They're getting there, right there. Now lift your hands, both hands up in the air. And then Michelle, can you come over here, please? Just lift both hands straight up, yep. Straight up in the air, like arms extended, straight up like that, yeah. I want it to be its own cue, its own thing. Like this is like you're thinking about getting bothered, and this is what we're going to do. Do you want to flow over there by the saddles so you can see? Yep, just stick with it. You're fine. Now release right there. When she, when she thought about putting her head down, go ahead and release. So go ahead and take her around again. One rein. And get a little shorter on that rein. Yep, just kind of pull and release. Make, the idea is that this part is uncomfortable. This is the like correction for her getting, getting bothered and upset. Yep, very good. Keep going, keep going. Now lift both hands up in the air, straight up. And just feel for when she thinks down. Cause she's not gonna just drop her head all the way down right away. She's just gonna think about it like right, oh, I don't know if that was, that was close. Lift up a little higher. There, there, now drop your hands, drop your hands, drop your hands, all the way. Super. Now let her, let, let her walk off, and then take her around the other way. And kind of go more in the middle of the arena there. So go ahead and bend her down to the left. So we'll teach it on the other side too. So again, the point is teach this when things are going well, 
at home. And once you have it, and you want to teach it with a little bit of intensity. Um, so go ahead and get, get a little firmer with her with your leg. Inside leg, yeah. More, more, more. Now both hands up in the air. <laughs> Super, drop them, yep. But I don't want that to be a walk off cue, so take her right around again, one rein. Yep, slack in the other rein. I would also recommend this. So you keep working on this, Avery. We're going to talk a little bit. Let's stand over here where the camera can uh, kind of see us and the horse. One thing that I know to be true, when you ride a horse with contact, to me, that is a spring tightening thing to do, not a spring loosening thing, OK? Whether it's Western horses, English horses, it doesn't matter. I would like to see her get rode on a loose rein and have a little bit more connection to the rider on a loose rein. Okay. You, when you control a horse, <laughs> yep, her, yep, one rein, bend her around, a little pressure there, more, get a little bigger, there you go, more, now stop, hands up, just hold, be patient there. So by riding on a loose rein, you develop more emotional fitness with the horse just by riding on a loose rein. They, they don't have to be responsible for their emotions when we have contact. That's true. And so, it, it, yeah, so it's just one of those. We're, we're managing them, yeah. So there's, there's a lot of positive things that come from it, but one of the downsides is we don't gain emotional fitness. Now, so again, when she gets bothered, just go to one rein and, and bend her down. And I, I think that it will be a big secret to working her at home. Think of it like um, they have different like cups of confidence, right? So she's very confident with the rider. She's very confident, um, you know, with actually the environment other than going to the show. But as far as like she's not spooking at the flags yeah. and the different stuff here. But, but she doesn't have a lot of self-confidence when she's or, or seeing the she, to me, she needs more self-confidence, which is loose rein riding and more confidence in the rider as the leader. So confidence in the leader. And that means us taking over and giving her leadership. So just controlling her while she's walking forward, it's not leadership. Yielding her feet and bending her and asking her to, to do more technical yields will help that, especially if we can get them done on a loose rein. So that's, so that's kind of, that would be my assessment. Yeah. What? You, you, I love riding with her. Awesome. That, that's one of our things. On your normal <laughs> ride, how much would you say you ride her on a loose rein? Oh, really? As long as I'm not there. <laughs> okay. Oh, the truth is coming out. The truth is coming out. So show me a little bit of how you would ride her at home now. And then if she whinnies out, you're going to do that exercise we just did, okay? So that's contact. So keep her in the middle over here. Yep. So you, so this, is this a loose rein to you? Okay. Okay, good. So when, you notice how she's a little high headed, a little bit bracy. So while you're just traveling around, you can do a modification of the, of the correction exercise, so to speak, by lifting up on your inside rein and putting your inside leg on. Just like when I had you on the circle, lift an inside leg. Lift the rein straight up. So you're not going to let her overbend with your outside rein, but lift there. And then you're asking her to stretch down. Um, and so that could be a more of a loose rein version of, you know, kind of the stretchy rein when you're riding with contact. Bend, yep, bend her around. There you go. Yep. Stronger, stronger, and then face us, face us, and hands up. It's a little stronger with the hands up, there. See, because she was kind of getting distracted and looking at other things. Um, but with how watchy she is looking at other things, to me, this is a horse that, um, She's, to me, she's always going to ride better with contact, but we need to develop that emotional fitness on a loose rein. Yeah. 
Um, so one of the exercises, another one that I would give you, so do this for me, put her on a loose rein, and again, going back to the groundwork, I, I did what I call the three circle game, where I asked her to bend her rib cage and bend her head and neck and walk on a circle, okay? So what I would have you do is put her on a loose rein and ride on, and then every now and again, reach down and just bend her under that relaxed rein, you know? And I would bend her, so it's like, when do you bend her? To me, you bend her if she speeds up when you didn't ask, you bend her if she goes, what's that over there, when you didn't ask. I would bend her if she takes over in a direction. She starts leaning one way or the other. I would bend her into the direction she's leading towards. That was, that was right, Avery. She was, she was leaning towards the gate, and you bent her towards that Yep. Now, when I say bend her, I want you to come down to a real small circle. Like right now, yep, bend her all the way down. And I want you to ride, do the circle around me. Okay. So right around me, lift the inside rein, inside leg, lift, lift that rein up. There you go. Real small, so too big. Imagine, remember how small I had it when I had her online? Think of it like that, like you're right here. Yes, yes. So you could, and I would do this, walk, trot, canter, and just bend her down. Now, when you do this with a horse that's bracy, they're going to come off balance when you bend them down. They need to be responsible for their own balance there, <laughs> right? And so um, this, this wigs out a lot of dressage riders when I say this because they would never do that. But they, to me, they really should. And I actually have some YouTube videos of a dressage horse that would fall over because he had no responsibility for where he was putting his feet. And so I gave him full responsibility, but I did it in a constructive way where he just had to pay more and more attention. And I didn't have any issues with that. We were able to continue developing him. Um, so in other words, he never fell over on me, even though I put him in some way more serious binds uh, in terms of I had poles going on, I had a loose rein, I would just bend him down from the canter, and he just went, this guy's crazy. I got to pay attention to where my feet are. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because yeah. she, she's checking out a lot, you know. Yep, so loose, go back to loose rein again. C correct, correct. So loose rein, I'm going to have you trot a circle around me. And if she looks to the outside, if she speeds up, if she does what she just did there and looks up to the outside of the arena, I want you to bend her down in the direction she's looking, okay? So loose rein. She's a little watchy right there, isn't she? Yep, so bend, reach down your inside rein and bend her down, really short. Okay. Bend her down, all the way. At now to a walk, so you want her to walk when you bend her down. Bend her down. So this is what we call a suppling exercise. So essentially, before the rear buck bolt spook, she gets straight and rigid and gets powered up, ready to do something that we're not doing. So by doing this, it's going to keep her more supple and more honest, honest about it. And this is something basically I would recommend as like a warm-up. So you would, you know, when you first get on her, you do this at walk and trot, you know, five minutes, five to 10 minutes or so. And then you get into your ride with contact and you, you do your ride. But she needs, she needs to be able to go to a loose rein and maintain gait and direction with a level head and not, not just immediately be worrying about all those things. Every time she does that, that is the precursor to all those things we don't want. In fact, it's one step before the Winnie. Right? She thinks to the other horse, then she calls to the other horse. So we're starting to get it right in the beginning. Now be strong there. Use your leg, strong, strong, strong. Now face this way and head down. Lift up. Perfect, Avery. Very good. Let her go all the way, all the way. That was great. You did that really well. But let her, let her have her head there. That's what you want. So if you give her a loose rein, she's not pulling them out of your hands then. If you hold it a little bit and then she takes it out of your hand, then she's pulling them. So now trot to the right. But yeah, she, to me, she needs quite a bit of this because the horse is not super focused. And that's what leads her to thinking about everything else. I, I really think these are going to make a big difference. Very nice. <laughs> yeah, she's pretty pretty natural. 
Now again, you're on a loose rein right there. She gets watchy. You bend her down, and you, I would have bent her to the left. I know it's counterintuitive because you were going to the right, but you, I'm, you're adding pressure to the direction the horse is thinking. So you're making that idea of over there a little bit uncomfortable versus saying, no, I want you thinking here. The more we tell them that, the more they want to look over, what's that over there? It's like if I put you in a fast car and I say, here's this red button, it makes the car go real fast. Don't touch that red button. <laughs> now what do you want to do? It's like, oh, I just want to touch that, you know. Yeah. So, so we, we, uh, that's how it is for the horse too. Um, yeah, so I, do you feel like this is a, a doable thing for you, Avery? Do you guys have questions? I know, Avery. Okay. Does that, is that helpful? You guys can uh, give you some strategies? Yeah. Yeah. So, so first I'll ask you this question, then I'll ask you, tell me what you kind of took away from that, that lesson. Uh, that we definitely need to be more assertive as the leader, okay. um, both on the ground and in the saddle, but um, temper that with her being able to control herself emotionally, working off a loose rein, learning how to yeah. do it herself before we take over and micromanage her with with some contact and, awesome. and, and management from the saddle. Yep. How about specific techniques? Is there any techniques in there that you're like, yes, we'll be able to use that and apply that when we need it? Yeah, I believe the um, definitely getting on her with the Winnie thing because okay. we hadn't been doing that before. Yep. So that was something that a previous trainer had told me to ignore. And so we were trying that, which obviously wasn't working. So we're going to be much more assertive yep. with her. Yep. And let me just say to the camera one, to reinforce this. The reason the winning, we call them out on it, is that is a right-brained thought. Smelling poop is a right-brained instinctual thought. We, that's why we don't let them do certain things. Yeah, she just, <laughs> she just says she does that too. So those because those behaviors mean the horse is, in a, has, is an instinctual right-brained thought, that's why we don't let them do that. Not because I'm so bothered about them winning. It's right, because want I want us. their focus on us. Yeah, yeah. very good. Yeah. How about you, Avery? Um, what, what was your takeaways from that? going to say that you have to do completely different things for just working so the head down asking differently working and then as a recovery yeah i thought that was interesting yeah anyway. awesome and then avery also was mentioning while she was riding <laughs> oh, go ahead and fix it bend her around <laughs> training never stops folks never training never stops. stops so that's something people also have to realize anytime you handle your horse you're training them and so these guys know as well as i do you, you even though we're trying to do the interview you don't let that go and well we'll fix it later no this is a, there's a learn, there's a teachable moment right there. Take advantage of it. And very few horses ever come to the point where you don't have to train them. Exactly. I mean, they, uh, the rest of this mare's life, we will be using these tools and yes. doing these things. It, it doesn't stop. Yes. Yep. You are you are spot on with that. Um, and so that's a great teachable moment. I would also it's say that it's important to focus on this very seriously for like the next five rides. The next five rides don't need to be about jumping or dressage. They need to be about connection to the rider. And that's it. Not, it's not about how many moves she does or, you know, that'll come and that'll be even easier and better. And you'll see improvements in all areas if she gets more connected to the rider. Um, and so what's interesting is she's doing her job pretty well now at home. You got a, you got a lot more horse under the hood there once you get her connected to the rider. Can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank well, thank you, you guys so both for coming out. Um, it was a pleasure working with you and your horse. Uh, thank you guys for watching and tuning in and joining us. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button, and we'll see you guys on the next one.